Danielle, I know one of the things you said that, that drew you to Homecoming was that it was this sort of rare opportunity to play a colorless character. Yeah. Curious, in what way did that differ from the sort of uh, previous offers that you were getting, and why was that so refreshing? Yeah, I mean, you know, just this idea that, you know, oftentimes when, when you know, you, you get these breakdowns for these characters, Sometimes it's a tough pill to swallow when, when you know, you see an African American uh, is just explained in one sort of a way. Which and, is what? what? What's the way? It... Well, I mean, I mean, you know, I think we've historically, you know, been written. African Americans have been written um, for one, um, very one-dimensional. Um, you know, perhaps they live one certain type of life. Um, you know, maybe they they're not educated. Maybe they are, you know. Uh, you know, some sort of criminal, yeah. perhaps. Just say it. Just say it. Yeah. Just say it. You know what I'm saying? Drugs and Dr thugs. All that. And, and, and for me, it's like I take it, it's a responsibility that we have as artists, um, you know, to be responsible for the work that we're putting out into the world. Yeah. And, and for me, it, it just meant a lot that, you know, I had this character, Homecoming, that didn't say African-American on the breakdown. Right. I mean, it could have very well said Caucasian. Yeah. Um, I'm acting opposite this little actress, Julia Roberts, um, you know, who I've grown up my, my whole life watching. Um, and then it was just sort of this thing that felt like, you know, anybody could have had this role, yeah. and here it is, it's mine. You know, and the, and the power that, that we have with that is such an incredible, incredible sort of a feeling. You know, it makes you kind of feel invincible, you know, that, that people are seeing you in a different sort of a light. And, and, and for me, you know, while I don't think that it mattered so much that Walter was black, um, you know, for the story, it matters in life that he is. You yeah. know, it matters for the kids watching it, for the for the soldiers for the watching, it, watching it, for the adults who, who watching. Who didn't it. have that? Yeah. And that was one of the things that was so powerful to me watching it. Huh. You know, coming up in another era where that was all we had. Yeah. If you didn't play thugs or drug dealers, you didn't work at a certain mm -hmm. age. And so to see this crack open like that. Yeah. To see this man, this beautiful man, be able to step into a space where. His ethnicity is not even... Irrelevant. It's irrelevant. Yeah. It really blessed my soul, for real. It's a special thing. At, at the stages of, of your careers that you are all currently in, what are the roles you're sort of either already tired of or just tired of being approached for? You know, the first thing that popped in my head was probably just period pieces. Oh, Just wow. That's yes. interesting. Staying away from period for a minute. Well, you, know? you were doing, I mean, one after the next. It's yeah. These historical. Yeah. And, and, you know, playing these historical figures are great. I mean, I, you know, I played Jesse, Jesse Owens and John Lewis, and, and, um, and those things are great. And, you know, there's, there's a lot of pride that comes with playing those types of people. Um, but at a certain time, you're just like, you know, you get this feeling that people in Hollywood think you only exist in like the 1940s and 50s. <laughs> you can't do anything contemporary. And, and, and so for me, that was one of the biggest, and again, it's, it's the power of the power we have as artists to, to say no to those things and, and to yeah. try and change and, and maneuver and craft the, the kind of career that you see for yourself. <laughs> This has been quite a remarkable sort of period for you. You go from Beale Street to Homecoming, or at least that's the way the world sort of received these projects. Curious for you, A, how the opportunities have changed since and, and how your making decisions have changed now that presumably the world's your oyster. I don't know. I think that the more eyes that are on you, I think that you, you're, you're more mindful of just how careful, you know, the choices have to be. Um, and uh, and for me, I think that it's a you know it's a wonderful thing to, to you know to be able to you know call up anyone or, or or have anyone call you up and be able to sit down and have lunch with anybody. I think that that's really cool. You know, all of a sudden I'm meeting these directors who I've loved my whole life, and now I get to go to coffee and lunch with them, and and, and they know me, and 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 you know that's a cool thing. Um, but I think certainly the the decisions get get tougher. You know, I think that you you're constantly thinking about. Um, what's going to challenge you next? What's going to be different um, than what people are expecting? And then, and then not wanting to oversaturate or do too much. Um, so it's a little bit of a, a balancing act, I think, for me at this at this point in time is you know learning to how to navigate this new 
this new level. Hi, I'm Sam Rockwell. Hi, I'm Stefan James. Hola, I'm Diego Luna. Hey, I'm Billy Porter, and thank you for watching. Thank you for watching The Hollywood Reporter. Hollywood Reporter. The Hollywood Reporter Roundtables. On YouTube. On YouTube. On YouTube. <laughs>